How's it going ladies and gents? Uh, Dave B. Sell Chevy here with a video and today we're talking about the Bolt. Now I put a post up recently uh, asking your questions about electric vehicles, figuring I have three years of experience driving this 2019 Bolt behind me. I just purchased this 2022 Chevrolet Bolt EUV and I've had two uh, Chevrolet Volts. That was the engine electric car combination. So I have a lot of real, real world experience driving an electric car and I feel I can share that with people and answer questions in help you through this process or this transition uh, that the world is going to. The world is going towards EV cars and it looks like, uh, you know, it's, it's inevitable. It's going to happen. What I did was I went through all the questions in that post and I kind of just broke it down to three different topics that we're gonna talk about. Uh, we're gonna talk about people uh, and customers being hesitant about electric vehicles. We're gonna talk about the fires uh, that have been in the headlines with electric vehicles and a little bit about that. And we're gonna talk about the two things that are really the main concern of people when they're looking at an electric vehicle, which is the charging. You know, how do you charge? Where do you charge? What does it cost? And what kind of range do you get out of a vehicle? You know, so those are the three topics we're gonna to talk about. Starting with the first one, which was a question that uh, somebody asked, are customers hesitant about electric vehicles in my experience? Now again, I'm here in sales, I'm on the front line, we field all the questions about vehicles when they come in. We also, uh, when customers are um, looking at a vehicle, like a gas car, let's say they're looking at an Equinox or a Chevy Trax or a Chevy Trailblazer, personally myself, I will always bring up a Bolt just to kind of see what that person says, kind of gauge their interest, see what their thoughts are, and there is some hesitancy. You know, again, people are, you know, human beings as we are, the way the mind works is where we're hesitant to change, right? We reject change. So if something's uncomfortable or if it's new or if it's scary to us, it's something that will push away. And there are people that will push away the idea of an electric car because they're not used to it. You know, they live their whole life driving a certain kind of car, certain kind of way, and they don't want to change from that. Um, what I can tell you in my experience is that I've had a lot of customers that decided to go to an electric vehicle, buy a Chevrolet Bolt, and pretty much everybody loves it. You know, there's not a person that I've had that came back to me and said, oh no, this car is not going to work. Um, I don't have the range I need. I can't charge it or whatever the case may be. Like everyone really loves, not only, not only does it work where they can charge at home and, and they can make it fit their lifestyle, it's also a lot of fun. People love the quietness. People love the torque. People love the regenerative braking. You know, it's just a great, a great drive it's a great drive. It, you know, you got to do it. You got to test drive. You got to, you got to own one to feel it. It's hard to put in the words, but it's a great driving experience. One thing I would ask you to do as you go out and you look at electric vehicles, and maybe if it's for the first time and you're kind of uh, inquiring about them, just keep an open mind. Keep an open mind. Learn as much as you can. Kind of put what that car can do into your daily lifestyle of your commute to work or where you go for for normal uh, trips and things like that, and just see how it work. You know, look how you can plug it in, whether it be at home or at work, and see how it can work for you. Keep an open mind. You know, one thing I do notice a lot is people have a very hard stance. It's either your full EV, it's the only way the world will ever survive, or EV is horrible, it's gonna collapse the grid and lithium mines are gonna destroy the earth. Like there's, there's no middle ground. Like it seems like with many issues today, people just take a hard stance and they don't move off that stance. What I'm saying, hop in the middle of those two stances and just learn as much as you can and apply it to your personal life and how it could work for you. Uh, personally, I can tell you, I love it, it's great. It works for me perfectly. Now I'm in a very fortunate position that I have chargers at work, so I can charge here. Um, I could also charge at home if I want to. I really don't need to. You know, pretty much my family and everywhere I go in my normal day-to-day -day life, you know, weekends, things like that, I can get there and I can get back without having to worry about charging. So very rarely do I have to charge anywhere but here at work. So for me, it works very well. Maybe for you it will as well. You can take that plunge. You can hop in an EV vehicle, and uh, I think you'll enjoy it. This here is a heat shield. Now, if you watched my last video, you will know that this heat shield rusted off my mother's 2002 Toyota Camry. Now, no big deal. She barely even drives this car anymore. Uh, what I did was I broke off the other end. This way I could uh, take it off because it was rattling against the exhaust system. Now, for those of you who don't know, this heat shield actually gets tucked up under by the fuel tank of that car and the exhaust runs underneath it and it protects the fuel tank from getting too hot from the exhaust. There's also a heat shield by the muffler and there's also one on the manifold under the hood. And these things are designed in internal combustion engine cars to help prevent fires, I would imagine. Now, in that video, I never mentioned I was putting a new one on and I thank you for all who commented with concern in that you take this off, you run a higher risk and you know you better hope that car doesn't catch on fire if that exhaust heated that fuel tank up too much. Um, we obviously don't want that. But the reason I bring this up is the Bolt has been in the news, you know, recently for 
fire risk. So I looked it up this morning, 19 Chevrolet bolts caught on fire. 18 of them were just like this. They were either a 2017 and 18 or a 19. And there was one of them that was not part of that year range. I don't know what year it was, it didn't say. So maybe it was a 20, a 21, or maybe it was a new uh, 22. Not sure, but 18 vehicles. From what I've also found, they built about 150 to 160,000 Chevrolet bolts. So in my opinion, that's a small number of fires, not to discount those fires and the damage that they caused, you know, families who, who lost their car, house, whatever it may be, but the risk is very low. What gets pumped out through the media and the headlines, which we all can't get enough of, right, is that this car is gonna spontaneously combust right next to me right now. And it's just not the case. So I pulled some stats for you. Now I just found this on Google, so take it for what it's worth. Here we go, the odds of a electric car catching on fire, 0.027%. Uh, a electric vehicle is 60% less likely to catch fire than a gasoline vehicle, like a normal internal combustion engine vehicle. And there was also a chart there that had fires per thousand vehicles. Hybrids are actually the worst. Now a hybrid is like an electric car and a gas car put together, you have both technologies there, 3,475 fires per thousand vehicles. Internal combustion engine vehicles, gasoline and diesel uh, were second place, 1,530 fires per 100,000 vehicles. And electric vehicles were the least amount of fires, which was 25 per 100,000 vehicles. So, you know, even though the headlines come out and it gets, you know, just pushed to our phones, our TVs, our computers, and it's constantly in our face, and it makes us feel a certain way, you just gotta do a little bit of research. It's not, it's not as bad as things may seem. Now, there is a risk, right? There's a risk with everything. I actually personally had a car catch on fire while I was driving it years and years and years ago. So, you know, I kind of get it. Like, I know what could happen. That was a gasoline vehicle. But when you look at electric vehicles, they're lithium ion batteries, right? Lithium ion batteries are in this cell phone. It's in your vape, if you're vaping. It's in electric bikes, electric scooters, those little hoverboards. Remember to fire stories with those. Those hoverboards became real popular one season. Next thing you know, they started catching on fire. I remember a guy's phone reading a story, a phone caught on fire, burnt the house down because the guy had the phone under a pillow, got too hot, caused the fire. You also see lithium ion batteries in laptops, lawnmowers, tools. And even if you have solar on your roof and you have those battery backup systems, that's a lithium ion battery that's bolted right to the side of your house. So these lithium ion batteries are pretty much everywhere. Uh, there is a risk. Uh, again, just don't let it completely, um, completely make up your mind of an electric vehicle based on headlines and things like that. Do a little bit of research, dig a little bit, and just see what the true statistics are because it's not, it's not bad. This is General Motors' new dual level charge cord, right? So this end is what you plug into the actual vehicle itself, right? This side, you can mount on the wall. It's got the little, uh, you know, little spots you can uh, put some screws on the wall and kind of mount it in. And if you notice on the bottom, there's an opening here to plug in another cord, which I have right here. You get two different cords that plug into this. You get one that's a 110 volt cord, which this is gonna fit into any outlet that you have in your house. You wanna make sure you have like at least a 15 amp circuit, you know, with nothing else on it. You would plug this into the bottom, you plug this into the, into the outlet, right? This is gonna give you about four miles for every hour it's plugged in. Doesn't sound like a lot, but if you're driving, let's say 30 to 40 miles a day, when you get home at night, if you can plug it into your house at night, in 10 hours, by the time you get to the morning, you're gonna replenish that 30 to 40 miles. So uh, this, um, this would work for a lot of people. However, with the Chevrolet Bolt, what we recommend is a 240 volt. That's right here. That's this one. So basically same thing. This is gonna plug into the bottom and you'll notice on the outlet here, it's a you know a little crazy looking uh, plug. Uh, this is a 240 volt uh, outlet that you can have installed in your house if you don't have one already. You haven't put it in the garage or wherever you want, whether it be inside or outside. And this will give you about uh, 25 to maybe 30 miles for every hour it's plugged in. So if you have this installed in the house, this car does 247 miles on a charge, you can really charge the car pretty much in eight hours or overnight, uh, a full charge. So if you're driving a 100 mile commute, a 50 mile round trip, a 200 mile round trip commute per day, when you wake up in the morning, you're gonna have a full charge, you'll be ready to go. This comes with the vehicle. Um, I think it's only optional on like the very base end Bolt EV. Once you go to an EUV, standard equipment, it's gonna be in the car.
The third option to charge the car would be a DC fast charger. Those are gonna be your public stations. Uh, we have one here at the dealership. You're gonna see them on, on the sides of highways. You're seeing them pop up at uh, places like Target and Walmart, things like that. There's numerous companies. You have EVgo, you have ChargePoint, you have Electrify America, you know, and there's more. When you plug into a DC fast charger, this car would get about 90 miles of range in about 30 minutes. The newer Ultium platform, uh, some of those will charge up to 100 miles in 10 minutes, you know, so it's getting a lot better and a lot faster as the technology advances. Uh, so that's the third way you can charge one of these vehicles. Now the two big uh, questions we get all the time are one range and two, when you charge, how much does it cost? That's the big question. How much does it cost to charge the car? So what you have to do is you have to go on your electric bill, right? And on your electric bill, you're gonna see a rate that's gonna be whatever it is per kilowatt hour. So let's say it's 10 cents, it's 15 cents, whatever it is for where you live, you're gonna multiply that if you're looking at a Bolt EUV or EV by 65. Now, the reason you're multiplying it by 65 is because the battery in this car is about a 65 kilowatt hour battery. So I did some math here and I have a little cheat sheet. Let's say it's 14 cents per kilowatt hour. That means a 65 kilowatt hour battery to fully charge it would cost you $9.10. That $9.10 is gonna get you the estimated range of 247 miles. Now that range could be more, it can be less. It depends on the way you drive, the temperature outside, the terrain you're on, uh, like your techniques of how you drive, like I mentioned. That could either give you more range or less range, uh, you know, and that's sort of the fun of driving an electric car is trying to see how much you can get out of it. That's, that's what I enjoy. But again, $9.10 to drive 247 miles. Now let's compare that to gas. Right now, gas in New Jersey is about $3.99 per gallon. So if we take the $9.10 that we spent electric to get to 247, right, mileage range, and we put it into gas at 399, we would get about 2.3 gallons of gas in our gasoline vehicle. Now, let's just say the average uh, miles per gallon you get out of the car you're driving, you know, pretty standard, about 25 miles per gallon. That would give you about 58 miles of range for the same cost, uh, you know, that we got 247 out of the electric car. Let's say you got a car that gets better gas mileage, it gets 30 miles per gallon. Well, the 30 miles per gallon for that same $9.10 would get you about 70 miles. So you can see it's much cheaper to plug the car in at home, uh, you know, compared to actually paying for gas. I did some more math here. Let me see if I can figure out what I did here. I took 247 miles that this car gets, right? I divided by 25, let's say average miles per gallon. That would equate to 9.8 gallons of gas if it was a gas vehicle. If we take 9.8 gallons of gas, multiply it by the current price of fuel, about $3.99, that would equal $39. So essentially, what costs you $9.10 in electric at your house, if your kilowatt per hour rate was 14 cents, which it is in this general area, um, that would cost you $9.10. It would cost you $39 in gas. It would cost you $30 more per fill-up to drive a gas car 247 miles versus this electric Chevy Bolt uh, currently in today's times as I create this video. I hope that made some sort of sense. All right, so that's pretty much all I have for you here. Uh, just a couple of those questions answered. As always, if you have questions, put them down in the comments. I'll kind of give you a little look. Here's a little behind the scenes here of where I was working. I got my ring light, I got my tripod, we got the uh, broken heat shield all the charger stuff. So I got to clean this up. I got to pull these two cars out. I do want to do a video uh, very shortly comparing the two, kind of like a debrief on the 2019 and then my first impressions of the 2022. I've only been driving this vehicle for about four days, five days now. So I wanted to get a couple more days under my belt before, uh, before I kind of made a video discussing any differences that I feel between the two. Um, other than that, yeah, keep an open mind do a little research, and have fun with it. This is new technology, it's fun.